Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the radio on this 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee. In this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll head over to the bench, show you the new radio, including the wiring harness, dash kit, and other accessories needed. Then we'll come back here and get everything installed. Let's get started. Now before we jump into things, a couple of things to note, this model Jeep Grand Cherokee has volume controls, the buttons on the back of the steering wheel, so we want to make sure we retain those. Also, it actually has the upgraded Boston Premium Audio Sound System, it's the upgraded amplified system from the factory, so we want to make sure we retain that as well. Third option that we noticed that this Jeep has is a factory backup camera. So we want to go ahead and retain the factory backup camera. Now you may or may not have those additional options. And again, if you do or do not, we'll make sure we include down in the description the other variations of the parts install needed, uh, just in case your trim level may be different than ours. First thing that we need to do to begin getting the radio out, we have to pull apart this center console. It gets it up and out of the way just so we can remove this mahogany style piece uh, dash bezel up and around the radio. So what we're going to do is we have a plastic trim panel and go ahead and remove this chrome piece first. Be very careful, you don't want to break it. Once that's out of the way, set that off to the side. Next thing is the actual uh, bigger piece comes next. Let's go ahead and remove that. There we are. Once that's out of the way, you will have a little Phillips screw inside here. Next, this dash bezel is just held on with clips. There's no further screws once that little one has been removed, so we can go ahead and unsnap the dash bezel. Now at this point, you don't necessarily need to disconnect anything because we have plenty of space to pull the radio out. You can disconnect your harnesses here and essentially on the back of the panel, there's gonna be everything keyed differently. So that's really your call. If you go ahead and disconnect harnesses, don't forget to reconnect them as soon as you install the new radio. Now up and around the radio, we have four Phillips screws. Okay, with that out of the way, you're gonna have some various harnesses on the back of the radio. Go ahead and disconnect those. All right, so with the radio totally disconnected, at this point of time, what we're gonna do is head over to the bench and show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. Okay, so we're here at the bench. The parts that we're gonna need for the install. First and foremost, we're going with this super basic Pioneer Double Den Touchscreen Radio. This is the Pioneer AVH-120BT. Features um, Bluetooth, USB, aux, CD, and DVD. Now to accommodate this radio in the dash, we need a dash kit. Now the dash kit calling for this vehicle, it's the Metro 95-6511 dash kit. This accommodates double dens. Now if you're doing a single den, we can put the part number for that in the description for you. We'll also need an antenna adapter, which is the Metro 40-EU10. Now because we have steering wheel controls, a factory amplifier, we'll need a specific harness. Now the harness that we're going to go with is this Crux wiring harness interface. It's the SWRCR-59. Now the cool thing about this Crux harness, it actually comes with two variations of the plug. So depending on your model year, you may use one versus the other. And the way you know which one to use, just head over to the car and see which one plugs in. You know it's going to be this one. Now this harness kit also comes with your amplified step down module as well as your steering wheel control harness. So at this point of time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the harness that was included with the Pioneer and we're gonna grab the harness that fits our vehicle. We're gonna strip both ends of these wires and we're actually gonna solder these together. Now it's essentially just wiring color for color. As we get this all soldered up, we'll also cover those connections with some heat shrink and some Tessa tape. So without further ado let's get started all right so what we've done was we've prepped our harnesses we've stripped all the ends same thing with this harness 
we're going to add in a little remote turn on wire as well as we have some heat shrink so we'll put this heat shrink up and over our wires before we start soldering them up now one thing to quickly note before you start going according to our crux harness here so we look at this diagram you have your non-amplified side or your amplified side if you know you have the factory amplifier and you're looking to retain that it gives you the wire grid diagram essentially here your aftermarket you only use the front two channels um, as those will connect into your amplifier harness if you don't have the factory amplifier then you connect just wire for wire you don't have to worry about anything special but since we have the Boston upgraded factory premium sound system we'll need to connect our amp our aftermarket white white black gray gray black wires to our crux harness green green black purple purple black respectively so keep that in mind it gives you walks you through step by step now if you want to see more information on this harness specifically we have an unboxing of this on the channel we'll link that video down in the description as well as link a card up above um, which dives in great detail on you how to use this harness specifically Lastly, it also indicates steering wheel controls. Since we're using a Pioneer, it shows you the dip switch configuration needed within the brain box. And we know within our dip switch configuration, we're doing a Pioneer, so we need to set ours to off on on, which we have done so on the module already. So at this point of time, let's put our heat shrink on, start soldering up our wires color for color. So we got everything soldered up color for color. Now a couple of special connections. Like I said, according to our crux diagram, because we have the amplified system, the reasoning why we hook our radios front speakers to the rear speaker colors on our amplifier harness for our crux module is because the factory amplified system, in this case the Boston system, uses only two channels um, a left and a right to, to feed the factory amplifier and the amplifier puts out all four channels um, because we can only feed those two channels the two channels that we want to feed our amplifier are going to be the fronts not just the rears um, it happens to be in the rear position that's why we have to hook it up this way now you'll notice on this harness it actually has a non-amplified and amplified version and then this end will plug into this harness so since we have the amplified version we'll plug it into this side it's going to feed our front two channels into the amplifier. If you didn't have the amplifier, you plug everything into the non-amplified side and wire it literally color for color. No special connections there for our speakers. Other than that, we matched everything else up. Nice thing is our harness also provides a uh, illumination, reverse camera trigger wire, everything like that. We won't need our rear speaker wires from our radio, so we'll cap those on off. And we don't need these wires of our wiring harness because they're not even plugged in anything. It's going to the amplifier. So these front wires will cap off as well. So the last thing that we need to do is move our heat shrink up and over these connections and we'll shrink it down with the heat gun. Everything's all taped up ready to go this end plugs into the pioneer this end plugs into the harness in the vehicle it's our brain module and steering wheel controls we have to use this one because it's pioneer this will go into the wr input on the back of the radio we lift out a remote turn on wire we tied this just in parallel with the blue white wire because um, we're adding an amplifier down the road now in terms of the factory amplifier remember we plugged it into the amplified side so that's all done Harness is good to go. So at this point now, let's turn our attention over to getting our radio mounted within the dash kit. All right, so in the dash kit itself, it comes with two little wings and then two sets of front end brackets. Now you'll notice they are a little bit different. One end is a little bit deeper than the other end. One's a little bit wider. So depending on your style trim radio, um, if you need to fill in the gap, use the wider one. If if it's nice and flush, then I'd use the skinnier one as we get this mounted to the radio. And we'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. All right, so we got our radio all mounted. We chose the, the shorter, narrow ones versus the wider ones because our bezel up and around the radio itself is really skinny. Now, if you had a deeper one, if you had a, like a flip out screen or a different mounting design, you may want to use the wider ones. It just depends what fits best with the radio that you have. We went with the skinnier ones. It just fit better. So we got our dash kit all mounted using the hardware supplied by the radio. That's ready to go. So at this point of time, let's head back to the car and start getting everything installed. 
Now, just a quick note, if you have the factory backup camera, which we do in this case, uh, the factory camera, it just depends how it looks. Ours came with like this, and it also looks like the main harness, but it's only a three wires going to it. It's our factory camera. And what we've done, we've already modified this. So we pulled back the, the tape that went up and around that, and there's three wires that went to this harness that are plugged into the original radio. We need two of the three, the ones that we need, our positive and negative wire for our RCA adapter. So what we did, we took an RCA video wire, just a yellow one. It could be any color RCA. It doesn't have to be yellow because each RCA has two wires in it. What we did is we connected those two, two wires. Your black or your shielding um, is going to be to the green with an orange stripe, that center pin right there. And then our positive is going to be green with a black stripe which is going to be this guy or the pin all the way to the side. And again, we're not going to use green with a white stripe. So green with an orange stripe is negative. Green with a black stripe is positive. So you take your RCA in, you can cut it, strip, and you're going to have some random strands of wire. That's part of your negative. Just get all the, the loose strands together and then uh, strip the, the white one or the one that is shielded inside. And that's going to be your positive. What we did is we stripped the wire back there and we soldered onto them. You can use T-taps if that's easier for you. Um, we just don't want to break the original connection. If you're not planning on installing the original radio area ever again, you could cut this harness off. But this end will plug into our camera input on the back of the radio, retaining the factory camera. So just a quick tip there, if you have the factory backup camera and you want to retain it on your aftermarket radio. So we're going to go ahead and tape these up, relume the harness, and uh, get the radio reinstalled. All right, so before we get the radio back in the dash, I just wanted to show you this, the center support piece that we had to cut out. We just basically cut straight down both sides. And what that does, it now allows plenty of space left and right for the radio to slip in, the aftermarket radio to fit in the factory location. So that center support will need to be cut. So at this point of time, we're back here in the car. Let's go ahead and get our harnesses installed. So our aftermarket harness will plug on in. Now this green wire is the parking brake wire. We actually ran it to the parking brake here in the center console. Um, if you don't want to use a parking brake or if your radio doesn't require one, you don't have to worry about it. Or you could put in a micro bypass by Pioneer if you're doing a Pioneer. Um, we'll link that information in the description. So with our harness now plugged in, you saw us previously wire up our backup camera. Here it is, ready to go. Now this one is a GPS antenna and you also have a factory um, XM antenna here. So if you're doing satellite radio or if your radio itself has uh, a GPS antenna, you don't wanna use the one that came with the radio, you can actually use the factory one, which is pretty cool. All you need is the correct harness for it. So at this point, let's start hooking up our radio. This end goes to the Pioneer. This end goes to WR input on the back of the radio. Okay, let's go ahead and do a test to make sure everything's working before we button up the radio. Check our backup camera. There we are. Okay, so everything's working great. So at this point, let's get the radio all the way back in the dash. Now we've pulled it out and started moving things around just so it can sit flush. We don't want to crush anything. All right, so we went ahead and reassembled everything, got the screw up in here. We got the um, trim, both trims up and around the gear shift all done. We're good to go. It looks great in the dash and everything is working awesome. That's about it for this radio install. Now, like we said before, just to show you, we did also the backup camera. We'll get you in a little bit closer to see what that looks like. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching. If you want to see how we did an amp and sub on this uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, we'll have a link down in the description as well as a card up above. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.